What is up, die converts? My name is Dad Radish, and I'm your vegetable father. All right, this is another gateway game. This is me uh, versus my friend, uh, Bember. Um, I taught him how to play, and now he's very routinely cleaning up the floor with me. So um, I want to show this uh, pretty cool game that we played. Um, uh, he's been playing this Reality Plus NBN deck. He's totally taken it out of System Gateway and into the future. Um, this is a System Gateway game. And while if you're sort of reading threads and catching up on things, a lot of the community has uh, graduated into Startup and Startup is the next format with more cards in it. Um, but if you're newer, I would say don't fret. Um, this is a really good System Gateway game uh, that I'm gonna talk about. Um, since Gateway is really good, people will still play uh, Gateway games um, and they're still incredibly fun. So my pitch is kind of like if you're uh, looking in Netrunner, just get into it. You won't regret it. The games will be fun. There's people who are playing. Um, yeah, it'll be a good time. So let's just jump right into this replay. So I'm playing uh, Lou, uh, who's an, the Anarch runner. So my ability is the first time each turn I trash a card that I'm accessing, I gain a credit and draw a card. Uh, my buddy's playing uh, Reality Plus. So uh, the first time the Corp gives uh, me a tag in a turn, the Corp can draw two cards or gain two credits. So uh, pretty powerful. Um, th those are uh, pretty big ways to impact the game. So I don't know, but the uh, the theme of this game or something to look out for is uh, don't run last click. And so uh, that's something that um, kind of described as a bold move to make is to run last click. It's a gutsy thing to do, and uh, we'll, we'll see that at play here. So getting into it, uh, what's kind of interesting at the outside of the game is we both decide to keep our hands. So uh, we both feel confident about what we're kind of sitting on. We, we think we have a game plan from here. Corp goes first. Uh, Corp has kind of a conventional start to the game. Um, they play a hedge fund uh, to gain money and then they install ice over HQ and R&D. So uh, looking at my hand uh, up here in the top left, um, I'm trying to think about what to do here. Uh, it feels like a little bit of a slow start. So um, I draw uh, first. Um, that's just uh, me knowing that I, I kind of need to, to get into some new stuff and, and uh, make sure that I'm uh, feeding the next steps of my game plan. And then uh, I go for slow money here. I install a smart red distributor. I load it up. The way this card works is uh, I take a click and I can put three uh, credits on it. Then when my turn begins, um, I'll get one credit uh, from the resource. So it's slow. I want to play cookbook. Um, this says whenever I install a virus program, I can put another virus counter on it. So it makes viruses kind of more valuable, faster. Uh, this will pay dividends later in the game. Uh, I know what I'm kind of, trying, kind of trying to do is set up to make Botulus really good when I find uh, the ice I want to put it on. All right, so the corp turn happens. Uh, they draw, they draw, and then they uh, do a predictive planogram. Um, and they use uh, this card, uh, which is kind of flexible. Um, you can choose one, you can gain three credits or draw three cards. If the runner's tagged, you do both things, um, which is a pretty incredible value. But uh, yeah, that gain three is pretty good. Uh, all right. So we're until the runner turn two. Uh, right here, what I'm thinking is let's force the corp to, to res some stuff. They have uh, 12 credits, that's, that's quite a lot. So let's see what's going on. I can also try and figure out um, what's, uh, if I know what the ice is, I, I have a better kind of read on on whether or not botulus is a is a good good deal uh, if i'm getting getting a uh, good value from putting it on something so first res is a palisade um okay so i bounce off of that and then uh i decide okay let's uh run r d okay run into a white space um this is the sort of like tough face check uh if you run into it without a breaker then you're gonna lose three credits um, so that slows me down a little bit. Um, I know I have to recover some econ, so I play the other smartware distributor and then I load it up. So this is pretty slow, but in um, system gateway, at least uh, this, this is how you got to get your credit sometimes. So, all right. So uh, a corporation is going to install anoetic void 
um, this is a really powerful upgrade that says whenever the runner approaches the server, you may pay two credits and trash two cards from HQ. And if you do, end the run. So I actually read this wrong. I uh, You'll see this later in the game. I'll talk about it more, but I think it's the other um, the other uh, upgrade, uh, Man of Arms Skunk Works, which says um, you need at least two uh, two clicks or two credit or five credits um, to have a successful run on the server. So uh, let's see what happens here next. All right, they install ice over it. Uh, it's a tithe. Um, and for me, my game plan here is just keep running. Um, I want to try to identify the right botulist target. So um, I I hit this. I can make it through the tithe. Um, I lose the the leech to the uh, net damage, but kind of keep going through it. Um, I see the animatic void. I say I would I would rather not have to deal with that, and so <laughs> I trash it here, um, and then uh, I draw a card. Or I from the trash um, I I draw a card. Um, let's see. Yeah, my ability fires. I gain a credit. Draw a card. Um, I draw again. Credit, and then uh, this is. Uh, I, I'm at four credits here. I take a credit so I can get to five, so I can play sure gamble, and uh, kind of uh, uh, come up in, in money. All right. So uh, the corp here pulls a public trail. Um, so uh, they play it on me here, and so this has is for four credits. If the runner ran successfully on the last turn, you can give them a tag unless they pay eight. Um, so, uh, there's a discourse about this. I think usually you should take the tag. There's an argument that, um, tag punishment is not that bad in, in these formats. Um, nonetheless, I'm scared. So I play the eight. <laughs> I'm afraid of tags here. Um, so, uh, I pay the eight and then, um, they install the spin doctor, um, and draw. So then I draw first and I uh, get the fermenter. This is uh, money for uh, Anarch runners or you know anybody who imports it. So I think this is going to be really useful. I go ahead and it starts off with uh, two counters on it. This is uh, four credits if I get a chance to use this. So I uh, feel pretty excited about that. And then I say, okay, r and is my target. Um, you know, I ran into the white space. I didn't like it. <laughs> kind of going to get my revenge by putting Botulus on it. Um, let's see. So here on this run, I kind of do a, a, a sort of uh, cheeky play, which is um, these are two subroutines. So the runner loses three credits. And if the runner has six uh, credits or less, end the run. But I have no money. So I what I do is I let the first subroutine fire. The runner loses three credits. I don't lose anything. And the only thing I break um, using a botulist token, um, I just break the second one. I just break the, uh, the runner six or less, end the run. So if that happens, then I lose no money. I use fewer botulist tokens, um, and I can make it in. So it's an advantage to having no resources. There's nothing to take. <laughs> so um, I access R and D here, um, and the thing that I access. Uh, let me step back here and see if uh, I can switch into runner view. We get to see the very exciting pop up here, which is what that I access a spin doctor, but I am too poor to trash it. I would need two credits to trash it. Um, so. That's that run. All right. So the corp uh, draws up to seven and then goes credit, credit up to five. Um, and then um, discards two, uh, um, send, uh, they have two copies of send, the message, send a message from hand. So this is a lot of agenda points to be sitting on. They have the spin doctor. So I think um, they feel kind of safe and this is a, a pretty good play to overfill your hand to force you to have to um, pitch things to archives. They pitch the send a message face down and they have the spin doctor ready uh, to save it if uh, if uh, I run on archives. All right, so I draw into my second botulus. Um, I feel like with uh, I put down the leech because whenever you make a successful run on a central server, you get a virus token. Uh, I've decided now that I'm going to be um, hitting R&D a lot, so I, I want to sort of benefit from that more. I run R&D. Uh, let's go back to the runner view here. I see a predicted planogram. Um, and then, uh, whoops. Not much. And then I decide to load uh, the smartware distributor um, and 
continue with uh, just giving myself um, this slow drip of economy. Corp starts, uh, starts a new server, uh, installs a second spin doctor, um, and draws up. So, uh, so yeah, I draw a second fermenter. So that uh, sort of signals to me, okay, it's time to take the eight credits off of this. So I use a click to do that. Around archives here, I have a bit of a feeling about it, and um, that ultimately forces the spin doctor res. So corporation reses, draws two, and then uses uh, trashes the spin doctor, or rather removes the spin doctor from the game uh, to bring those two agendas back into R and D. Um, okay, and then I use my last click load the other smart word distributor again, keeping up with the drip economy for the game. All right, next thing is a hedge fund for the corp. Um, they put a second ping over server two, so they're really protecting this um, quite a lot. And then a pretty planogram uh, to get three credits. They're up to 11. Um, I finally have enough money to, to install Buzzsaw and not feel like I'm uh, going too low on credits. So uh, I decide to uh, run server two here, see what's up. Uh, the second ping gets rezzed, or the, uh, the ping in this second position gets rezzed. Um, that uh, gives me a tag, because uh, that's what happens when you res the ice, uh, the first time you res the ice, and then uh, it ends the run. So I get bounced, I know what it is, I know that I, um, I'm looking for my barrier breaker here. Um, for a click and two credits, I clear that tag, and then I decide, you know, I have my botch list here in R&D, let's go ahead and run it again. This time I have to use uh, both tokens, because um, I actually have money this time and I don't want to lose three credits. So, uh, Go ahead and use both. Check on R&D. Um, let's see, uh, what am I getting here? It's a hedge fund. All right, so uh, the corp here, um, more protection, uh, puts Palisade over server one, and then makes the play. They put in their orbital superiority um, into server one. They've seen uh, they've seen me bounce off a of ping, so um, you know maybe there's a bit of a read here, a bit of a guess that I don't have the barrier breaker, um, and I don't. So this is a bit of a mystery to me what happens here. I think what, it ha what is happening here is I'm looking for my barrier breaker. So um, I draw up a lot in this. So I draw, I get a sure gamble, draw, get a DZMZ and draw, get a carnivore, uh, my console. All right, I should talk about what carnivore does just because it's going to come up. So uh, it's a pretty important card for Lou. It's a four cost uh, console. Um, it's a piece of hardware, adds a memory unit. And, and while I'm accessing, I can trash two cards from the grip to trash the card I'm accessing, and I can use that once per turn. So it's a way to uh, trigger my ability. It's also a way to uh, to, to do it without um, spending any any credits. Um, so that's uh, pretty special. Um, okay, so I didn't find my barrier breaker. Um, I kind of feel like what I should have done here is install for a mentor. Um, we're at turn eight. I don't really have too much more time for this to cook. Um, so it might be uh, pretty prudent to get that down instead of doing more smart root distributor, which, you know, you're going to see a whole bunch more. Um, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, that's what I do the last click this turn is um, load the smart word distributor. So uh, load that up. So in their mandatory draw here, they, uh, they get the retribution. Um, so this is a uh, very low cost, uh, one credit play if the runner's tagged and you can, they can trash installed program or a piece of hardware. So this is kind of a signal I'll pay for a floated tag. If I end my turn with any tags, then um, it's pretty easy for the corp to uh, take a breaker or something important from it. So they draw onto the Anoetic, they install the Anoetic Void in server one, and this is where I make a, a misread. Um, I think that this is the Managarm Skunk Works, the other, um, the other protective upgrade. Um, they install a Funhouse on server one in the third position, so I can tell they're really trying to protect something here. Question is, can I uh, can I get enough to be able to get in? So I install the Carnivore, I put the Botulus on uh, HQ, and I'm so mad that I didn't do this earlier when um, the corporation had three <laughs> agendas in hand. Um, so I go ahead and try to take advantage of this. I try to uh, get through HQ. Um, what I end up accessing is Neurospike. Uh, I end up seeing this card. So this is a three credit operation. Do uh, X net damage where X is equal to the sum of printed agenda points on agendas you scored this turn. So as an example, they score orbital superiority. They play Neurospike um, uh, and it'll deal 
uh, two damage because that's. Uh, let's see if I can get my mouse over here. <laughs> two damage is the uh, number of points um, that they score. So uh, that is a, a big nope for me. <laughs> so I toss the uh, two remaining cards I have uh, in order to trash the neuro spike. And then um, my plan here is starting to be to keep HQ kind of thin. If there are uh, fewer cards in HQ, then when I get in there, hopefully um, better odds that there is an agenda there. All right, Corp turn. Uh, they play a public trail. Um, I don't know about the retribution, but uh, I kind of uh, I feel I'm I'm feeling it a little bit. So uh, and you know my philosophy of this game is avoid the tag. So uh, I feel kind of itchy about it. I have exactly eight credits, so I pay the eight credits. Um, leaves me uh, uh, with very few resources. The corp draws here, and then they advance uh, orbital superiority to one. So I start the next uh, uh, my next turn with no money, so it's credit, credit to get up to three, and then I have verbal plasticity. That's This makes my future draws um, pretty good. The first time I draw or do a basic draw, I'll get two cards instead of one. So I install that. I, I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna need cards to power carnivore. I'm gonna need cards to get out of this economic hole. So um, I go ahead and draw next, and I get uh, Wildcat Strike and Buzzsaw. So it's around now in the game that I make the joke to my friend. I, I say something like, "You can score that orbital superiority now," um, which is a bit of a parlor trick. Um, uh, newer the newer players I play with uh, say uh, joke with me like he always knows what card it is. Um, and obviously, you know, after playing the game for a little bit, because the gameplay encourages certain patterns. So um, the first ice on on a, on server one is uh, often Palisade because Palisade says I'm better if you put me in a remote server. Um, so um, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a joke that that I'll I'll play here. Um, making that joke turns out to bite me at, later in the game. It's uh, I get a lot of karmic retribution for uh, saying that around now. All right. Uh, 11, Corp advances, advances to three, um, and then draws. So um, an odd, a uh, bit of an odd play pattern. Um, so I uh, draw, uh, my uh, verbal plasticity draws uh, feel pretty good now. Um, so I run R&D. Um, let's see, what do I end up accessing? Let's dip in here. I end up getting Funhouse. Uh, let's see, scroll this a little bit. And then I decide to run HQ. The botchless tokens are accumulating. And then I get in and um, I access the superconducting hub. Great. So I just got lucky and sort of snagged the only agenda out. And we're back. Okay, so now we're starting 12. So uh, in turn 12, uh, the corp installs Funhouse over R&D. They, they can tell this is pretty porous. Um, they credit credit up to six. I think they're just sort of trying to be able to afford um, uh, the funhouse plays here. Um, Any of a, a few different things that they're going to need to do. Um, I draw. I get a Docklands Pass and a cookbook. Um, things that I want. Um, I need money for them, so I uh, just install the smartware. Then I load load up two smartwares. This is three credits a turn. This is me just uh, trying to stay above board. Corp draws, install Palisade, make a new uh, server three, and then put an Amaze Amusements upgrade behind it. Um, so another protected server. So I have some of those credits now. I install Docklands Pass the first time. Each turn you breach HQ, access one additional card. So I'm getting two cards, accessing HQ, and I decide to try and use it right away. Um, let's see, I end up accessing Ping and Neurospike. So I see the other Neurospike uh, again, I say, no, not today. <laughs> so I uh, trash a couple of cards. Uh, I throw out the cookbook and the wildcat strike. Uh, I already have a cookbook down, and I don't feel like I'm going to get a good chance to wildcat strike. So get rid of it. Um, don't want to see that neurospike. Um, I draw. I get cleaver and botulus, which is great. So I finally have my barrier breaker. I've uh, been looking for it for many turns now. And uh, because I had a successful run, I decided to install Carmen here. Um, if you may successful run this turn, it costs uh, two fewer credits to install. So it's three instead of five. Um, so just trying to be a little more efficient there. 
in turn 14, uh, the corpse mandatory draw is send a message. And so they put that into server three um, where they've um, made it a little more costly to, to uh, secure this by having an amaze amusements there. They draw and they install another ping over server three. So um, pretty beefy collection of servers here. So I run R&D here. I feel like, you know, a res could be bad for me, but there's a lot of unres dice on the table. They only have five credits. So if they do decide to res here, then it gives, opens up some of these other servers for me, gives me some other options. Don't take the bait. They do not res here. Um, so I um, get past and what I end up accessing, a white space. So that's uh, not much. Um, let's see, what do I do next? I do, I get a draw here or I do a draw. Um, it's two cards. It's the overclock and the cleaver. Um, I make a mistake here. I run out of memory units. Does it actually say, um, yeah, after installing the cleaver, I go to negative one. And so that means I need to trash something. So I get rid of the botulus over R and D. I, I sort of had to choose here between R and D and HQ and I have multi access with Docklands pass. So I kind of feel like I want to preserve my HQ access. So I have overclock feels like I should use it. Um, let's see what's happening in uh, server one. Uh, oh, we have a bit of a redo here, so we're going to uh, do this run uh, from uh, the other side. So I encounter the Funhouse, and um, I'm on my last click. So Funhouse says, when the runner encounters, end the run, unless the runner takes one tag. So what I decide to do here is um, just end the run. Um, I think one of the reasons for the redo is, uh, in the redo, uh, or in the first version of this, the corp didn't res here and res the Palisade. And I think one reason, um, you know, we went back to do the redo is because um, it's my last click. It would have been a good time to uh, hit me with the tag. It would have powered up retribution. Um, it would have made orbital superiority a play. So anyway, I think that that might be it. But I decided to not take the tag here. So we get to turn 15. Uh, the uh, corp went down quite low to res that fun house. So uh, it's just money time. It's credit, credit, credit. And so I think that the upgrade in server one is mana garm at this point. So I'm trying to figure out how we can get past all this ice uh, with either five spare credits or two spare clicks. Um, and I can't, I don't feel like I can work it out in this turn. So um, I decide to sort of try and keep up with the pressure I have. Um, I draw just because the draws are good. I need the cards, run HQ. Um, I end up accessing a maze amusements and um, I use, car I use Carnivore here to trash it. I'm trying to, I think, preserve the, preserve my uh, credits here. Um, I'm also here thinning HQ to make it more productive um, when I am able to get there. Let's see, so I load up Smartware and uh, let's see. Yeah, I load up Smartware twice here. It is the corpse turn. They install a Funhouse over HQ, so they're seeing how um, uh, they're drawing into ice, which which they need because um, I'm I'm able to make my way in here pretty easily. Uh, credit credit going up to four. I draw first. I get DZ MZ and overclock. Uh, I play the overclock right away. Um, again, I feel like okay, so I have two clicks left. I'm gonna have some money from overclock. Maybe this is the way I'm gonna be able to get through on uh, server one. So I take the tag. Uh, the corp chooses two credits, um, so uh, that that's the reality plus ability. Get almost all the way through, and then the corp reses the anoetic void. So I bounce from the server. They uh, they pitch two cards and uh, pay uh, pay two credits, and and I'm out of it. Uh, I have two clicks left, and so I got to use them to clear the tag. Um, and then I try to run HQ. Um, then the white space comes up. Uh, I paid one credit on Buzzsaw to be able to get through. I make it in. I see the retribution, um, and then I I uh, kind of I have another nope moment. I <laughs> said I don't want you to have that. So then I uh, use Carnivore to trash it. So so I have to say about this point in the game, I'm feeling pretty in command of things, even though my economy is kind of slow. Um, I'm I'm able to make things happen. I have all my breakers. I have Leech out here with ten uh, counters, so I can make a lot of stronger ice I can weaken it, which, you know, is a way to compensate for not having a lot of credits. Um, the corp goes up to six here. 
I take a credit. So I run here and for some reason re redo it. Um, I don't remember what that reason is. So anyway, we're going to go to uh, R&D here. They res the fun house. I take the tag. Um, when I take the tag, they decide to draw two cards. Um, I buzz saw through, make it into R&D. Let's uh, see, what do I end up accessing? It's a tithe. That's not what I wanted to see <laughs> in the last seven cards of the deck. I was really hoping to catch um, an agenda here. Uh, I use a, a click to uh, clear a tag. Then let's see, what are we getting here? So I access the fun house. Um, I decide to trash that with carnivore. Um, again, trying to thin HQ. And then I access the spin doctor. Um, and I can't afford the trash cost of two. Um, so don't get to do anything. Um, and then I missed the send a message in hand. It was right there and I uh, I whiffed on it, which is gonna happen sometimes and I'm gonna be mad about it. Uh, Corp starts, uh, they had to res another fun house so they spend it getting, getting credits. Um, I also want to get credits. So I uh, go up to five and then uh, play my sure gamble. And then last click. So this is the thing. I run last click. Um, uh, and uh, we have some funny stuff here. We we have to do something to sort of like reset the game state. So I'm going to try and skip ahead here. This is kind of where we are more actually. So I run last click here. I take the ping and I'm kind of like in for a penny, in for a pound now. So I try to get all the way through. The Amaze Amusements comes out. So whenever a run on the server ends, if uh, the runner steals any agendas, give the runner two tags. So I already have a tag. I decide, okay, uh, I'm gonna trash that. Uh, I'm gonna take the agenda. I'm loaded up with tags now. And uh, that's that's just gonna have to be how it is. So at this stage of the game, uh, again, we have to sort of like adjust some things to get it back to the, to the way the game state was. But um, Member knows that he can score the orbital superiority here and deal four meat damage. I, I'm tagged up, so it'll deal, instead of giving me a tag, uh, when you score this agenda, if the runner's tag, do four meat damage. Um, but it won't be a flat line because I'm, I'm gonna have zero cards in hand, but but not, not exceeding um, the number of cards I have in hand. So what Bember does here, spin doctors before the start of the turn, the draw is, is, is uh, kind of inconsequential. I mean, it, it actually thins out R&D, so it does help. And what they're going to do is they're going to put the two neuro spikes back into the deck. So they remove the spin doctor from the game. They shuffle neuro spike, neuro spike back into the R back into R and D, which only has six cards in it now. Six cards, two of them are neuro spike, which is um, the uh, the winning card for this round. The mandatory draw, so th that they start the turn with, is the neuro spike. So they have it. First, uh, first click, advance orbital superiority, score the orbital superiority, put me on zero cards. They only have two credits. They have just enough to gain a credit to pay for the neuro spike, and they flatline me. <laughs> um, and so this is uh, this is the end. This is how this game ended. Um, I avoided tags all game. I lost my focus a little bit. Uh, I think I got a little nervous because I felt the game slipping away and I ran last click. Ended that turn with three tags and that was just uh, the end of it. Um, and I really didn't need to do that. So when reviewing kind of like where we were in the game and how this works, I could have just uh, clicked for credits. I could click for credits and wait. Um, I had a botulist in hand. I could have just put the botulist somewhere and made some of this work easier for me. Um, yeah, I, I, I got impatient and lost focus. And I think on the corp side, I think this game really shows the value of being patient um, and knowing your outs. So uh, I think Bember had in mind that, uh, I mean, he cooked a, uh, he cooked this orbital superiority like all game, like dozens of, uh, more than a dozen turns in the game, this orbital superiority is just sitting in there protected by uh, Anoetic Void and a kind of, I think, potent combo, which is a, uh, there's a fun house in front of it. And if it's reality plus, you know, you'll be able to either get two credits or two cards, whatever you need to power the Anoetic. So was extremely patient with hanging this out here. 
Um, and I think that he must have felt pretty vulnerable in the endgame because he didn't have credits a lot of the time. But having this um, advanced is just a lot of a lot of leverage. It just hinges on a tag, um, you know, and it brings you really close to to a win condition, a flatline in endgame. So yeah, I take the tag, and man, I'm flatlined. And uh, this was this was a fun way to lose the game of Netrunner. I mean, I could have played I could have played it better. I got a little unlucky in some places, but um, I was uh, really proud of of how this this turned out. And uh, I think this was sort of the beginning of a, I wouldn't call it a rivalry necessarily, but I, I you know, uh, he's carried this NBN deck into startup, has uh, has brought it in, and I keep, I keep bashing my head against it just to, um, I don't know, improve my play and see, see what's happening. I haven't been able to beat it yet, so anyway. All right, so that'll do it for this replay. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's, I've been, my kids got sick. I got sick. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a, uh, so the story of things and why I haven't been able to, uh, to post in a while, but, um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying all your games. Uh, remember, uh, turn off the lights when you leave the room and, uh, always be running. <laughs>